If you're a digital artist, you may have seen some videos about print on demand. I actually have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to selling online that includes print on demand. But if you're new to the world of print on demand, where do you start? Well, the answer is right here. This video is an overview of what you need to know, what you need to begin, and I have a few tips to help you get started on the right path. This is ground zero for print on demand. Let's go. It can be really frustrating trying something new and learning new things, especially if you're not sure exactly what you're doing or where you're going. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how print on demand works. And I've got two channels that you may find helpful on YouTube. The first one is Crafty Stack. So if you click the subscribe button, you'll never miss an episode. And there's lots of things on here like public domain art, and it's really digital tools for crafters. The other channel is called Zen Water Cooler. Again, you can hit the subscribe button so you never miss, miss an episode. And this channel is really designed for print on demand specifically, although there's a few other tips and tricks in there. But for the most part, this is where you would want to subscribe if you want more information about actual print on demand. Okay, so what's the big deal here with print on demand? Why are we interested in selling items for print on demand? Well, back in the old days, I'm old enough to remember, I used to actually have a garage when I was a young adult and I bought t-shirts and I actually used a t-shirt machine and I printed them in my garage and then I would sell them at flea markets. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. So here's just an example of what my garage felt like, especially to my dad when I was still living at home. And he's like, are you getting rid of these boxes of old crappy t-shirts anytime soon? So the nice appeal to print on demand is that there's no inventory. You create designs, you upload them to websites, and then somebody comes along and buys them, and then the product is printed, and that's a really big deal. So here's just an example of how this would work. So you've got a consumer who goes onto a website like, for example, Redbubble. Okay, that's a common, really popular website where they can buy goods that are designed by people like you and me. Let's say they buy a t-shirt and they pick their favorite design. Maybe it's a funny cat or maybe it's a funny text design, politician design, American flag, whatever it is, and they purchase that t-shirt. Now, the t-shirt then gets printed. So it's not like Redbubble's got millions of t-shirts all sitting in a warehouse. They print the t-shirt after it's already bought, and then the t-shirt is printed and shipped to the consumer. This is all great for the consumer, but it's also great for the artist because the artist winds up getting a small commission. It could be anything from 15 cents all the way up to 20 or $30, depending on the product that's purchased. So here's the print on demand platforms, just in a nutshell, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to take notes or something, here's the top eight that I would, re I personally recommend and I've used these. So I know there's more out there. I totally get that there's others, but these are the ones that I personally recommend. And if you're looking to start, you can't really go wrong starting with Redbubble. There's really no barrier to entry. It's very easy to use. And then I'll go through the other ones as well. Okay, so the first one here is Redbubble. Again, it's one of the most popular print-on-demand sites in the world. You simply type in a search phrase here. So I'm going to type into the search window, funny dog, for example. And we can see we get back 484,000 results. And we can scroll through and you'll see it's not just t-shirts. There's stickers, there's shower curtains, there's magnets, there's all over tees, there's buttons, lots of different things. So I'm just going to click on this one, for example, golden retriever sticker. I'm just picking this completely at random. And we can see here, here's the sticker, $3.38. When you buy more than four, it's on sale. When you buy more than 10, it's on sale. And as I scroll down, you can see it's available on 61 more products. So if I like that design, I can click on this little link here and I can see all of these designs are now available if I like that dog design. So as an artist, this is really nice because if you have one design, you upload it you structure it for every single product and then you wind up hitting publish and now you've published to 61, 62, 65 different products. T Public is a similar site. It's not the exact same. It is owned by Redbubble. I'll type into search all designs and I'll type in funny uh, Father's Day, for example, just to see what comes up. 
And you'll see there's a bunch of different stuff that comes up. There's over 50 pages. You can go to the most popular, the, the newest. And then when I click on the design itself, I'll get an option to purchase the t-shirt. What I really like about TeePublic is they make it very easy to use. You can basically pop on any color here and there's lots of different colors and it showcases the design which is nice. You can also select the sizes. So if you're maybe a little larger than average or smaller or whatever, male, female, the mock-ups are really nice on this. You can also scroll down and you can see there's different options as well for masks and stickers and that sort of thing. Lots of different options here on TeePublic. Merch by Amazon is one of the greatest online platforms for sellers. And the reason is because it's tied directly into Amazon. So you can go to amazon.com or the Japanese Amazon, Great Britain's Amazon, that sort of thing. So the idea here is you would have a tier system. You start off on the lowest tier, so you have 10 slots and you can upload 10 designs. And then as you sell those designs, you make more uh, availability in your slot. So you'd go up to like a tier, you know, 25, tier 100, that sort of thing. So there's different slots. Merch by Amazon is not an entry level, like for beginners, you'd have to have a portfolio built up and actually apply to get onto Merch by Amazon. But it's definitely worth, if you have a little portfolio of your work built up, it's definitely worth applying to Merch by Amazon. It's free to do. You just need to have a portfolio so they'll accept you. The best part about Merch by Amazon is that they actually sell the shirts right on Amazon. So if I type in funny t-shirt cat, for example, a lot of these designs that I'm seeing are sold right through Amazon. So you know these could be designers just like you and me that have signed up on Merch by Amazon and are now selling right on this website. One of the biggest platforms in the world is Amazon. Displate is one of the most unique print-on-demand websites. They sell metal prints. So instead of t-shirts or coffee mugs, they sell these big metal signs that are fixed to your wall with a magnet. So here's just an example here. Let's click on Kitty Cat with the ship. And this is the Monster Titan Cat Kraken poster. We can see here the different sizes. There's a medium is 45 centimeters, a large is 67 and a half. And the extra large is actually four disc plates that when you put them in an array on your wall, they make this really large poster almost a meter high. You can also select the finish as well, matte or gloss. So it would change how it looks slightly on the wall. And then you can also select a frame too. Most people, I think, don't use a frame, but if you ever have one and you want to have a frame around it, that's a cool option too. I do want to point out that Displate is pretty selective about who they take on. So if you apply on the Displate, they may not accept you right away. You'd want to have a really good portfolio and you'd want to apply and explain your digital art skills. As you can see, this digital art is pretty high end. It's not just simple text designs. Often they're quite graphically intense. Cafe Press is one of those ones that always seems to be sort of on the fringes in the print-on-demand world. Some people have really good success with it, other people, nothing. So Cafe Press, I'm using cafepress.ca just because I'm in Canada, but if you're in another country, the suffix would be a little bit different. But there's a lot of different branded items on here, and they really market it towards personalized gifts, gifts for him, gifts for her, that sort of thing. It's certainly worth checking out. Fine Art America is one of those sites that doesn't seem to get the same traffic that a Redbubble does, but it still does okay. And it does sell featured collections of some pretty high-end artwork. It also does encourage artists to sign up. Now, when you sign up for an account, you have limited slots, but if you pay, it's under $50 for the year, you wind up getting unlimited slots where you can insert artwork and designs and you can upload them onto all sorts of different products yoga mats coffee mugs zip pouches tote bags phone cases that sort of thing the last one that i'd recommend you at least take a look at is a company called spreadshirt.ca and when you get to their main page it says you can create your own design or you can shop from independent designers the one upside of course is it's really easy for you to start creating your own products the, it's the same downside though, is it's not necessarily encouraging people to come here and 
shop on a platform. So this is really a lot of designers creating things and then wondering why they're not making a lot of sales. I'm not saying Spreadshirt's not worth it, but you may just wanna look at ways to promote your shop because I don't think Spreadshirt's necessarily looked at as a marketplace the same way a Redbubble or a TeePublic is, for example. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick 30 second walkthrough about any of these sites. And I'm just using Redbubble as an example because it's probably the one that I'd recommend you start with. You know, the, it's the easiest to understand. And really what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a design. So you're gonna find either a public domain artwork, you're gonna draw something yourself, you're gonna use funny text or, it doesn't have to be funny, but you know, text design, that sort of thing. So the step number one is you're gonna actually create the design that you want to use. Step two is you're then gonna upload the design into the website and you're gonna make sure it looks good on all 50 products that are available. The third thing you're gonna do then is tag it. And what I mean by tag it is you're gonna put keywords on it so that people can easily see it so it shows up in your search. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is just click the login button over on the right hand side and if you've never signed up for Redbubble before, I'm just gonna click the sign up button here on the very top. So you can log in or you can just click sign up. And it's going to ask you, are you signing up as an artist or are you signing up as a customer? I'm gonna click sign up as an artist and I'll type in my email address, my shop name, my password, and I'll click sign up. Okay, so I'm logged in. I've actually got my own account here set up and I'm gonna click over on the top right hand side where it says account and when I click on that, I can click sell your art and that'll take me to a screen now where I can see how to create my own product. So I'm gonna add new work here on the top. Now it's gonna give you an option to upload new work or if you've already got artwork uploaded, you can copy the existing work and what that will do is copy all your settings over which is really handy because there's over 60 products that you're gonna be uploading your artwork onto. I'm just gonna click this upload new artwork and I'm just gonna pick a design that I've got in the tank somewhere to upload onto a product. If you don't have a ton of skill or if you don't own Photoshop or you know vector software, there are tools you can purchase and there's subscriptions you can buy. So for example, I'm on a site here called vexels.com. Total disclaimer, I'll put an affiliate link down in the video description if you're interested in purchasing a subscription. This is pretty high end, but if you don't have uh, you know, skills in Photoshop, this can be a really nice alternative. Full disclaimer on the affiliate link, if you were to click on the link and purchase something, I would receive a small commission. But that having been said, I do actually use Vexels quite a bit just because it's really fast. So here's just an example. I've gone into a t-shirt maker. There's a t-shirt making tool and I just clicked on this template. I just changed the font and now I can just download this. So I'm just gonna click this download button and now I can just use this as my commercially licensed design that I'll upload onto Redbubble. So I'm just gonna click the download button and within 45 seconds, I've got myself a t-shirt design. Okay, so I'm back in Redbubble now. I'm just gonna click upload new work over here. And it says here they recommend high resolution JPEG or PNG files. The one that I'm gonna be using that, I'm, that I got from Vexels is pretty big and it's also a PNG file. So it's got a uh, transparent background, which is really nice. So it's just gonna take a second here to load up and then we'll see what it looks like. Now in the meantime, there's a title, there's tags, and then a description. You'll wanna make sure that these are all filled in when you're uploading your design onto Redbubble. So for the title, I'm gonna use something like, for example, Mondays, am I right? And then I'm gonna put the word maybe funny in there. And I know some people like using tags in the title and some people don't, and that's fine. And then there's tags. I'm gonna type in 15 keywords that are descriptions that will help people find the design. So when they're on Redbubble and they type in funny, they have a chance of finding my t-shirt. I'll type in funny Monday, Monday, skull, skeleton, you get the idea. And then in description, I'm gonna say, you know, hilarious design, perfect for any occasion. And you would obviously write something a little bit better in there but you try to sell your work and get your customers excited about it. Now I can also, as you can see here, here's all the different products down below. I can also change the background color as well. So if I wanted to have say a yellow background on it, I can click on that. And then underneath, you'll see a lot of my products now have yellow on there as well.
So you can see there's a ton of different products that are available. And inside of these products are products. So for example, inside the standard t-shirt, I'm gonna click on edit and that will open this up. There's actually all these different colors I can place it inside the design here. I can make it a bit bigger if I want. For example, if I make it too big, it'll be like not re readable, but I can do that. And then I can also center it horizontally and vertically, so I can make sure that's correct. And then I can also go into this little tag here and I can even put it on kids' clothes, toddlers. Now you would not want to do anything kids related if you've got a risque design. So if you've got some half naked pinup model sipping a martini and smoking a cigarette, stay away from the children's designs. You know, uh, but for this sort of thing, you know, this is a pretty benign looking description and, and this is just a funny shirt. So I can have that on. So I've got all of these now are activated. And I can even put the markup. So if I wanted to change my t-shirt markup, for example, to say 20%, I could do that as well. Now I'll click apply changes and we'll see at the top, I've got 12 of 12 enabled. And then I can go through the other ones because there's other ones like stickers and magnets, for example, they have, you know, four of four because it's not just a sticker. There would also be magnets. So that's what the sticker looks like. See that little white outline around the sticker? That's called a kiss cut. And so that would be the sticker that you could purchase. Now I could replace that image if I wanted with a different image, maybe a circular image, maybe a different background. I can replace that if I wanted to do something specific about a sticker. And there's all of my stickers and my magnets are on the little gear icon here shows the different markups. There's magnet, glossy sticker, sticker, and transparent sticker. If you're happy with that, you just click apply changes. So you can go all the way down. There's all sorts of products on Redbubble. And this is just one of those eight sites that I was highlighting. So you can enable a product and then you can edit how it looks. So for example, for a pin, I can make this a bit smaller and we can see it actually changes it in real time up here at the top. So I can kind of make it look like, all right, center, center and then click apply changes and that's now my pin. Here's a mask, I can click on it. I can make sure that the mask is centered and readable. See how it's too tall, like the design is up there too much? So I can change that and make it fit on the mask. One of the nice things on Redbubble is you can also have a pattern as well. So you can actually make the design, I'm, this'll be too small for a mask, but you could, well maybe not, you can throw it like that. So you could do that as well if you wanted. It looks really nice on larger items, but you can do a regular grid, an offset grid, or just no pattern. So you can play around with the same design and you can actually upload it multiple times with multiple backgrounds, multiple colors, that sort of thing. When you're all done with the leggings and the socks and you've enabled everything, then down at the bottom you would pick your media and then you would pick your default product and that's what's gonna show up in the search. I happen to like stickers, that's my personal favorite, so I'm just gonna select sticker. Is this mature content? No. And then I have the rights to sell products, yes. And then I'm gonna click save work. From there, it's gonna process. Now I know I didn't make all my products the exact right you know, way, but I'm just using this here as a quick walkthrough. You'd go through each of the products and make sure every single product looks correct. And then when it gets published, then you'll see what it would actually look like when a customer goes on there and sees it. So you can see here, like my mask didn't go correctly on some of this product. My graphic t-shirt, for example, is not right, but that's okay. You get the idea, right? There's all these different products now that would come along and you could shop for these now as a customer and you could have big oversized clothes, t-shirts, coffee mugs, and so on. Okay, so let's run through some common frequently asked questions that you might have if you're new to print on demand and you've uploaded some designs onto Redbubble or TeePublic. Can I upload the same design to different sites? So the same design uploaded to Redbubble, TeePublic, Merch by Amazon, the answer is yes. You are the artist, you retain the copyright. And this is one of the nice things is if you have a best-selling design, you can upload it to multiple sites and you actually retain the copyright on it. Can I use public domain images for my designs? The answer is yes, absolutely. So that design, for example, from World War II with the famous lady holding her arm out like a strong, like a strong arm, 
you might have seen that in the thumbnail for this video. That lady's called Rosie the Riveter. She's completely public domain. You can use that, and I have used that on t-shirts, posters, coffee mugs, and so on. So no one owns a public domain piece of art. In fact, you do, I do, we all do. I bought a design with a commercial license. Can I just upload the design to Redbubble, TeePublic, and Merch by Amazon? Now, I don't recommend that. Okay, the reason is that you could have the same design uploaded to Redbubble, and you could have, even though it's public domain, or even though you bought a commercial license, it's the exact same design as someone else's, so you could get a copyright strike. So you'd wanna make it unique in some way. You'd wanna change the background, add something to it, that sort of thing. So you might be thinking, well, this is too good to be true, right? But what's the biggest benefit to sites like Redbubble, TeePublic, Merch by Amazon? Because you're not holding any inventory, you're just uploading designs. And in, realistically, you can upload an unlimited number of designs. You're really only limited by your imagination, your energy, and time. You don't need to deal with the customer, you don't need to print the product, you don't process or uh, a payment, and you don't ship the product. You're just designing and you're getting a commission check. That's it. It's a really nice feature. And yes, sometimes the commissions are really low. You might make 15 cents on a sticker or you might make $3 on a t-shirt, but it's truly in the sense passive income because you're not shipping a t-shirt in the mail. And that's a nice feeling. Now, in addition to places like Redbubble, TeePublic, Merch by Amazon, there's also print supply platforms. And these are print on demand sites, but these companies, Printful, Printify, and this new, for example, they physically print the product, and what you wind up doing is synchronizing your store with these printers. So for example, you could have a Shopify, you may have heard this term, Shopify, you buy a website, and then you have Shopify kind of lay on top of the website, and it's an online e-commerce platform. So when you go to a website and it says click the shopping cart, they might be using Shopify. So what would happen is you would go to a Shopify site, buy the shirt, and then one of these three companies would print and ship the shirt. Same thing with WooCommerce and Big Cartel. Those are e-commerce platforms that sit on top of websites. So you can purchase an item and then have these companies ship it. So the customer sees your website on Shopify, WooCommerce, or Big Cartel, and when the customer then buys something, these companies, Printful, Printify, and this new, ship the product. Now I'm just using this as examples with one and one and two and two. You could have a Printful account set up and sell on Big Cartel. You could have a Printify account and sell on Big Cartel. You could have a, this new account and sell on Shopify. They're all mix and match. You could have all three, like I have accounts on all three platforms and then you could sell on any of these. And as in addition to this, you could sell on other sites like Etsy and that sort of thing. So here's just an example of what Printful would look like. There's different clothing here for men's clothing. And then if I scroll down, there's also women's clothing as well. All this stuff here. There's kids and youth clothing. There's even accessories. So that you can sell all these things. I'm just gonna click on men's clothing and just to show you how easy it is to create a design. So here's a bunch of different shirts. I'm gonna use this three quarter sl sleeve shirt. So from here, I can see this is the price that I would pay. So I would pay $20.02 Canadian, and then I could sell that for whatever I wanted, $30, $35, that sort of thing. So I'm buying the shirt from Printful, and then I'm reselling it, and I'm only doing this after I make a sale. So I'm gonna click this one here. This is a bit nicer. This one is an American Apparel shirt, and it is $21.84. I'll click on that. So here now I can just drop my design. So I can choose my file, I can add text or clip art. I can basically design the shirt right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click this little button here to select all the colors. And then I'm going to click this button here to drop my design. Okay, so here's just a design that I uploaded and it's just a retro palm trees design. And I can move it around. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can also, you know, I can modify it over here. I can rotate it. I can do all sorts of weird, wild stuff with it. So let's say I wanted to make it look like that. I'm going to center it horizontally. So that's my design there. From here, I can basically just get the design now printed. I, like I can save this now and I can list this on my store. So I, it's pretty easy to do. You can just upload a number of products into Printful and then you can just list them because the websites talk to each other. 
So it's kind of nice. Printful actually has an example store and the website is printful-demo-store.myshopify.com. Bit of a mouthful there, but you can see here, this is an example of what a website would look like. And they would just use something like Shopify here. They go to men's t-shirts, regular, you could pick your different products and then you would scroll on down and you could see different latest releases, things like that. So this is like a regular website, right? It's no different than like walmart.com or Target or something like that, but this would be your website. And then when you go in, a customer goes in and buys a hat or some sort of personalized product, they would wind up getting their product shipped by Printful. Same thing here with WooCommerce. This is what a WooCommerce store may look like. So different designs on t-shirts, leggings, prints, that sort of thing. And when somebody wants this, they would click on it, they would then add it to their wet, to their cart, and then they would wind up buying it. Printful would print it and ship it. So you bank the difference between what the customer pays you and what you pay Printful. So if you're brand new to print on demand, this may be a little bit uh, less intuitive than it would be, uh, for example, versus a Merch by Amazon or a Redbubble account. You just sign up on Merch, you sign up on Redbubble, you just list a bunch of product, and then you just get commission checks. This is a bit more uh, involved. So the first step is you would link your Printful account with your Shopify business. So the Printful basically becomes a printer. Step two is you list your product in the Printful world as an available product to be printed. Then you actually then link your, your Printful product with the Shopify listing. So it's like you make it live for the world to see. So me as the customer, I'd go onto your storefront, the Shopify account, and I'd go, oh, okay, I really like this shirt. I'm gonna buy it. I pay you money, I maybe pay you $30, for example, you then get the shirt printed, maybe you pay $12, you pocket the $18. I never know or care who your printer is, I just care that I receive this shirt in the mail. So a common question you might have is, this whole Printful Shopify thing feels like a bit more work compared to Redbubble, TeePublic, or Merch by Amazon. So what are the benefits of doing it this way? And the real reason people do it this way is that you own your website. Imagine you do all this work on Redbubble or TeePublic or Merch by Amazon, and then they shut you down. They close your account. They ban you. Maybe you accidentally upload a Spider-Man design and they say, well, copyright infringement, they ban you. Well, they can't do that if you own the actual website, if you own the actual store. The worst that happens is Printful will say to you, hey man, we're not gonna print that. We can't print your Batman beach towel because you obviously copyright infringed it, so please don't send that to us again. In rare instances, Printful can ban your account, but you have to be like really hardcore trying to skirt the rules here. You have better visibility with your customers. That's another big reason. If you're running your own t-shirt business through your own website, you have all the customer information. You can send them thank you notes and birthday cards and coupons and all that sort of stuff. Bigger markups is a big one as well. If you're selling and you, through you know a printful slash Shopify experience, you can usually get about $10 a shirt, sometimes even more, versus a Redbubble or a TeePublic or a Merch by Amazon, you're looking at maybe four or $5 a shirt. So that's that can really add up if you're selling hundreds of items. You can also have way more variety in what you offer. You can link different suppliers on your branded website. So if you have you know Zen t-shirts, for example, and that's the name of your store, well, you could sell Printful items, this new items, Printify items. You could even make your own items and sell them on your website. You can mix and match and you can have a massive amount of inventory that way. So what are the downsides? As you can probably guess, the biggest one is dealing with customers. You're now actually shipping the item. Yes, Printful is printing the t-shirt and yes, Printful is shipping the t-shirt, but you're the one selling to the customer. In the customer's eyes, you're shipping to them. So you can't blame Printful if there's a printing product uh, deficiency. You can't blame this new if the item arrives late. You know, th that's not, that you have to own that as the business owner. 
That means you're also going to be dealing with returns, questions, exchanges, and complaints. This can be a real time suck and a real soul drag as well. So when you're dealing with, you know, Redbubble and TeePublic, by the way, you never have to see, you don't actually can't see any customer information. You just get a sale. They just email you, hey, you made a sale. This is completely the opposite. You're actually running your own little business online and it's a lot of work. There's also startup costs as well. Shopify is not cheap. It's $30 a month, $40 a month. It can even be up to like $80 a month depending on the size of your store. So there's website hosting, there's e-commerce software, there's overhead, and of course the time involved dealing with customers as well. So let's jump in now, next steps to success. This is the big one, right? So you've got this far, you're probably thinking, hmm, I kind of have an idea of what I would like to do and which path I would like to take. But what does it actually look like to get from A to Z and actually get successful? Let's jump into that. Okay, so step number one, what you want to do is sign up for the following print-on-demand platforms. Start with Redbubble and TeePublic and that's it. Okay, do not go any farther. Get a few designs up on each of the sites and get familiar with them. Redbubble will pretty much take anybody with a pulse, okay? I know there's a couple countries where Redbubble won't allow sales, but for the most part, Redbubble is the easiest one to sign up to. TeePublic, I would then recommend signing up next once you have some designs in the bank with Redbubble. And with TeePublic, they may not turn on your visibility right away, and you may have to email them and say, hey, my t-shirts aren't showing up in the search window. Can you help me? There's also Displate as well. Displate doesn't necessarily take artists right away. You'd have to kind of sell them a little bit. They're a little bit picky on who they take. So when you've got maybe a couple hundred Redbubble designs and you think they're really good, that's when you would then apply to Displate and say, hey, can I be a part of your website? There's also Merch by Amazon as well, and it's a similar process where you have to apply to Merch and you have to ask them to be part of it and supply samples, not physical samples, but like a link to your website. So I would highly recommend starting with Redbubble just to see if you would like it, if you enjoy it. And lots of people just go on Redbubble and they just run on that and there's nothing wrong with that. Step number two is consider if you'd like to set up any of these partnerships as well. Now, I haven't really mentioned Etsy to any great detail, but you can sign up and sell through Etsy. You can sell through eBay. And then Printful and this new are just examples of the printing companies. So you'd link up Printful and this new with a sales website like an Etsy or an eBay for example. These are kind of in-betweeners in between having your own website or going off of a Redbubble. I did want to mention as well, you could use a Shopify account here or a WooCommerce account or a Big Cartel account. I just wanted to mention that is really expensive to start up, but if you already have your own account, like if you've already got a website set up and you're already selling items and you just want to add some print on demand, then you could just sign up for a Printful account or a this new account, for example, and just add them to your inventory and that would be great too. But if you don't have your own website and you're like, oh, Shopify is like 40, 50 bucks a month, you can consider selling on Etsy or selling on eBay. They're a little bit easier and free or at least very low cost. Etsy costs 30 cents or 20 cents, depending on what country you're in, to list a listing. And eBay gives you 10 free listings right out of the gates. So you can list on these guys for relatively low risk without having to spend a ton of money on overhead every month. Step number three is to figure out your niche. And this is one that's really overlooked. So what happens is you do all this work. You set up a website, you set up an Etsy store, you, you start selling stuff on eBay, but you're just selling random stuff. So what I would recommend you do is figure out what you're good at and figure out what customers actually want to buy. Everybody in the world wants to sell funny cat designs because they're easy to do and, and they're popular. The problem is there's so many stores that sell funny cat designs chances are good you're never going to make any significant sales. So what you want to do is research your niches. Maybe you have strengths because of the country that you're located in. Maybe you have strengths because of who you are. So for example, if you're a really funny accountant, why not have a funny accountant store? 
finance, financefunniestees.com, something like that. Maybe you're a dad and you want to have Father's Day and dad-related items, grandpa-related items. Maybe you're a big Halloween person and you're going to have a whole bunch of monster-related items. You'd want to figure out what niche you're in and then have a store or a shop that capitalizes on that niche. And you can have more than one niche, by the way. On Redbubble, for example, you can have like up to, I think, 20 different shops. Um, like there's one shop, but they're called collections inside of Redbubble. So you can have like these 20 collections and they're like these self-contained little stores inside of your overall Redbubble shop. It's kind of nice. Step number four is when you sign up onto Redbubble or TeePublic or Merch by Amazon or Displate or whatever company you're going to use, or if you use Etsy or eBay, you want to have a hundred really good designs. Now, I know it takes time to sell on Etsy and it takes time to sell on eBay and Merch by Amazon. You're not going to be able to get to a hundred right away, but that should be your medium term goal. On Redbubble, you could get a hundred designs uploaded in one weekend. It's not really a concern. But you want to start and get 100 designs uploaded, say, onto Redbubble and TeePublic because that will really teach you what works and what doesn't. And then out of that 100 designs, probably five will be consistent sellers. And from there, you'd want to build off of those consistent sellers. Step five is you really want to pay attention to feedback. And what I mean by this is getting favorites getting likes on social media if you're sharing posts about your um, about your products. If you're on Redbubble, people can follow you or they can favorite designs. You want to make sure to pay attention to that. Of course, if you sell something, that's the best feedback of all because someone's parted with their hard-earned money. So you'd really want to pay attention to that. So like I said before, if you upload 100 designs, expect that maybe five are going to be consistent sellers. And what I mean by consistent is you sell them more than once. So it's like, oh, I sold my funny accounting t-shirt. Uh, that's I sold that again. Oh, wow. Okay, that's the universe telling you, make more of those. Make more of the designs that sell. And don't worry about the other ones. You might sell them occasionally, but you'll figure out there's two or three niches that you'll be wind up being a specialist in because of the, their consistent sellers. So pay attention to sales. Pay attention to people who are following your work. So they'll physically like follow you on Redbubble. They'll say, so-and-so is now following you. They get notifications when you list something new. Sometimes you can put your email address right in your shop store. And so people can reach out to you either through the platform or through email, and they can get, ask for custom requests. I get this a lot. People will reach out to me and say, hey, I really like your shirt that has blah, blah, blah written on it. Can you make it with Jane's name on it instead of Fred? Oh, okay, sure, I can do that. Oh, happy 70th birthday, Nana. Can you make this say happy 68th birthday, Nana? Yes, I can do that. So request is really nice as well. I use Pinterest quite a bit for my designs and I promote on Pinterest and I pay attention to how many click-throughs I get, how many views I get. That information is really useful for me to gauge awareness and popularity of my designs. The big thing to remember is that when you get this feedback, mix it all together and then use critical thinking and make more of those designs. Don't just randomly make stuff. You wanna pay attention to what the universe is telling you hey, we like these. And if they say, hey, we like these, make more of those. Dominate the niches that you've chosen to be in and you'll make consistent sales. I did want to mention that there's a couple options that are kind of in between buying your own website and you know the all-in option or going the Redbubble Tea Public route, which is kind of like let everybody take care of everything except for the design part. There's like a hybrid. And the first one is Etsy. So with Etsy, you have your own store. So here's one called Artsy Fartsy Teas, 8,600 sales. It's a nice looking shop. And they sell t-shirts. And as you can see here, this is like print on demand. So this is a mock-up generator. Now, I don't know if they use Printify. I don't know if they use Printful. I don't know what their company is that they use, but good on them. So they might, in theory, they could be printing their own shirt as well. But if you're using print on demand, it would look like this. So this is Etsy. You would have a shop set up. You would list your designs and then you would link your Etsy store to Printful or to Printify. So Etsy's a really nice option because it's kind of a hybrid where you can list like Redbubble. And yes, you're paying a small fee, but you can get a, usually a larger margin because you're shipping this. So it's like a website light 
Now, you're still using Printful or you're still using Printify, but the website itself is not like Shopify where you're paying $40 a month. This is Etsy where you're paying like a few cents, like 30 cents a listing kind of idea. Another one here is eBay, and you can list on eBay. Even if you have a brand new account, you can still list up to 10 items on eBay. And so here's just an example of a cute little design. And this is like a print on demand. So you would select the size and then you would, you know, buy it. And then if you buy it, you know, these would ship through a Printful or a Printify, that sort of thing. And look, there's more than just them. I'm just using them as an example. So you can list on eBay as well. And again, if you're listing for free, you get like 10 free listings a month. If you're a top rated seller, you can sometimes get hundreds or even thousands of listings in a month. So these are two options for you. We have Etsy and we have eBay as kind of hybrids where you're using a printer, but you're not necessarily fully invested in the overhead of selling online. So if you're wondering, how do I get really good at this stuff? No worries, you've come to the right place. I've actually got a channel on YouTube called Zen Water Cooler. You can just type in Zen Water Cooler in the search, but I'll also put a link down in the video description below. And I've got lots and lots of videos about things you can do to make money with print on demand. Lots of Redbubble videos, lots of you know free designs. I've got some links to some really high-end items that you can use. So Zen Water Cooler is the name of the channel and I would encourage you to subscribe to that channel and you can hear me talk in depth, do some deep dives on some of the concepts that we covered in this video. If you're interested in more artist resources, you can subscribe to Crafty Stacks and this is my other channel. So it'll still be me, I'm still doing all these videos, but I've got videos here that are a little more deep divey into how actual artwork works. So these are some technical walks walkthroughs that you can see and a lot of them are Inkscape related, some Photoshop related, public domain images, that sort of thing. There's lots of cool ideas here that you can take a look through and I do some walkthroughs on how you can make some really killer stuff that'll hopefully push your shop to the forefront in customers minds. So lots and lots of videos here you can spend hours and hours binging some cool content. So I hope you guys found that helpful. This is designed for beginners, brand new. Hopefully I shone the light of knowledge a little bit here about how print on demand works. Go forth, watch some of these other videos on these channels. And as always, I really appreciate comments, questions, give it a thumbs up, let me know what you think. And I'm more than happy to take requests. People will sometimes comment in the video, hey, can you do a video about such and such? Happy to, I'll do my very best to help in that regard. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Take care.